Welcome to 8.5's The Math Moment. Today in fifth grade math, students were working with customary measures of liquid volume. So they were working within the customary system, which is the system we, hear, we use here in the United States. We're no longer working in the metric system, um, and using King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. We're putting that aside for now, and we're focusing on um, the customary system. And today we'll be looking at gallons, quarts, pints, cups, and liquid ounces. So we have two little helpers and tool, strategy tools to help our students think about those different measures. The first one is called the big G, or the land of G, and the students really like drawing it, but what it, or what it um, signifies is the big G is one gallon, and inside the big G there are four Qs, which are, stand for quarts, which shows me that there are four quarts in a gallon. Inside each quart there are two um, letter Ps that stand for pints, and then inside each pint is two, two letter C's, which stand for two cups. So this helps your student know quite a bit of information just by drawing this diagram. It helps them know that there are four quarts in a gallon, there are two pints in one quart, which means that there are two, four, six, eight pints in a gallon. It helps them know that there are two cups in one pint, four cups in two pints, four cups in one quart, and 16 cups in a gallon. It gives them all sorts of information, but what it also does is help your student know the basic unit that they're working with for them to multiply or divide when they're converting between units of measure. The other tool that we have is um, an arrow guide which helps your student know whether they should be multiplying or dividing when they're working with two different units. So for instance, if I had a measure for gallons and I wanted to find out how many cups, we encourage your student to put their finger on what they have a number for, move to what they want, and whichever direction they're moving helps them know which symbol to use. So anytime I'm moving right on the diagram, I'm going to multiply. Anytime I'm moving left, I'm going to divide. So we're going to use those two strategies to help us with our examples today. Example one says 144 cups equals how many gallons? So I have a number for cups. So that's where I'm going to start on my diagram. I want to know how many gallons. So I'm moving cups, gallons, cups, gallons. I'm moving towards the left, which means I'm going to divide. And I'm going to take 144 divided by something. To figure out what I'm going to divide by, I need to go to my big G. And I need to figure out what is the basic connection between cups and gallons by figuring out how many cups are in just one gallon. So when I count up using the big G, I notice that there are 16 cups, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 cups in one gallon. So that's what I'm going to divide by. I know that 16 cannot go into 1. I know 16 cannot go into 14. So I need to decide 16 times what gets me pretty close to 144. I'm going to try 5 because that's always a good middle number to check, to check and start with. And I know that's 80, so I need to get quite a bit bigger, so I'm going to jump up to 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. I need to get even larger, so I'm going to try 9. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 5 is 14. And I got exactly what I need. So my answer is 9 gallons. All right, the next one says, how many pints e is equal to two and a half quarts? So even though it is written out of order, meaning that I don't know what I have is the first thing that I see, and then the unit of measure that I do have comes second, I still put my finger on quarts to start, because quarts is what I have a number for. I don't have a number for pints. That's what I want to know. So it needs to be the second thing that I look at. So I have quarts, and I want to move to pints. I have quarts, I want to move to pints. I'm moving to the right, which means that I need to multiply two and a half times something. The next thing I need to do is figure out what is the basic connection between pints and quarts. So I go to my big G. How many pints are in just one quart? Well, I see two P's inside one Q, so that helps me know I need to go ahead and multiply by two. Now, we're going to have to dig back in our brain to think about how we multiply with mixed numbers. Hopefully your student remembers that we need to do the loop-de-loop -loop trick. Some teachers call it the backflip. Some teachers call it the C method. 
Um, but it's where you need to multiply your denominator and your whole number and then tack on or add on your numerator to make it 5 over 2. The denominator stays the same. And then you can go ahead and times by 2 over 1 because changing a whole number um, into a fraction, you can do that without changing its value by just placing it over 1. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. And I know two, 10 divided by 2 is 5. All right. So after students practice with just some basic conversions, using the two tools um, to help them come up with those conversion problems, they went ahead and applied that then to word problems. So let's take a look at example two. It says, Erica drank eight cups of water in the morning and one quart in the afternoon. If she follows the same pattern for a week, how many cups of water will Erica have drank? Okay, so anytime that I'm working with time, um, multiple things happening at a time, I like to just make a diagram or a picture of my thoughts. So I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, in one week. And I know that if she does all of this in one week, it should just com um, continue that way um, to help me add up uh, everything that I need. But I also know that it says I need to be working in just cups. And I do have eight cups for each day, but then I also know that I have one quart. So I need to change one quart into cups before I can put them together, since my answer needs to be in cups. So I'm going to look up here at my big G. Because I'm only working with one, I can just look and see how many cups are in one quart. And I see that there's one, two, three, four in one quart. So I've got four cups in the afternoon, eight cups in the morning. I know that eight plus four is 12. And that means I'm drinking 12 cups, or excuse me, Erica is drinking 12 cups of water each day for a week. So just giving me that visual helps me see that I'm gonna have to take 12 times seven to add all of those up. Seven times two is 14, carry the one. Seven times one is seven, plus one is eight for a final answer of 84 cups. Now, your student might start to get a little bit frustrated um, with working with word problems and conversions because it is a lot of information. So I encourage them to write down, draw a picture, um, and make a note off to the side of their work about exactly what they're working with and what step they're on. If you have any questions about customary conversions of liquid volume, make sure to see your math teacher.